Hello, everyone. That's right. It's part three of our Belgrade to Bar Odyssey, and it's downhill all the way to the sea. Welcome to tonight's Rail Natter! As the Intercity 225 fades away, you can see we're trundling above the clouds, uh, making our way southwards at, at an increasingly fair lick. Before we press on, you might wonder, where are we in the world? Well, um, as, as last episode, I'll remind you, we are now in uh, Tsunagora, Montenegro, uh, approximately 950 kilometres from Railnata Towers. Two episodes ago, episode 179, we were travelling from Belgrade down to Užice. Episode 181, last episode, we were travelling from, or last episode in this mini-series, we were travelling from Užice to Kolosin. And this episode, we will be travelling from Kolosin down to the end of the railway and the coast, the Adriatic Sea, in Bar. Part two, last episode, uh, we uh, ended uh, in Kolosin. Uh, uh, there you can see, uh, and we start the episode actually a little bit further south from Kolosin uh, in Kos, a uh, little station between tunnels just just below the peak of the Dinaridi at the top of the railway as we roll down the hill. Uh, much like the theme, we emerge from a tunnel to see... You know, we're just rolling above the clouds, and this is the theme. We're kind of in and out of tunnels for quite a substantial part of the railway and just looking out across... You know, these little, you know, these little sort of line-side halts that are quite nice. You see, we're just the clouds. We're in it. We're among the clouds. What was I saying? We're dancing with angels at the end of last episode. Well, it's very much true. And, and the views, just the, the views on this bit of railway, this section. I mean, the views are stunning. There we are. Lots of... There's a rather impressive-looking bridge that, um, reassuringly, our brakes are working because we just pulled to a halt. And indeed, we sat for quite a while stationary here <laughs> without moving. Um, nice view. But uh, here we are, we're going again. I don't know whether that was a brake test, um, more on why there might be a pause and a brake test uh, later. Anyway, we are, yeah, the, the weather closes in a bit, uh, which is a shame, because uh, we get rain on the window, which is really annoying for the autofocus on my camera at the time. Um, so, so, yes, see, annoying. But uh, hopefully you're getting a, a hint as to the, the sort of how stunning it is, because rather than being at the bottom of the gorge, as we have been previously, we're very much at the top of the hill, looking down into the valley. Um, oh, look, it's another tunnel. <laughs> uh, just, uh, yeah, they're, so even with this, the, what ended up being kind of grotty weather for a short time, uh, this didn't last the whole rest of the trip, by the way. Even with this, you just have this... Is this problem? Uh, you just have these... Stunning views. You can see the road, the the old road, weaving its way down below us. We're about to merge out of yet another tunnel. There, tunnel. There we go. And uh, there, there, there's some vertical views. Um, quite something. <laughs> Not for the faint-hearted. I just, yeah. Uh, uh, once again, there's some bits of this is awesome. bits of railway. This is incredible. Oh look, it's a nice passing wow. loop. Um, to enable us to go past yeah. various other trains, yes. I think momentarily. Was very good, though. Yes, I think momentarily we're, we're going to go past an engineering train. Actually, you can see with the, the, I mean that's a barrier you want to trust because we are over a multiple hundred meter drop to to our doom. And that's uh, that's Lutovo uh, there. Uh, we are, oh, in fact, that's a halt with a load of, um, before I say anything more, a load of uh, railway upgrade and engineering uh, equipment there. Some nice uh, on, on track machines and plant, a bit of a bridge, uh, and a view back up the, the valley. This is the, we are in the, above the uh, Moratra River here, um, uh, and over the other side, somewhere, in fact, there's looking back at the, at that halt and the engineering equipment. And a bit of a view and the rain. Um, Causing some, some minor headaches. Uh, both Dina and I here uh, enjoying the views. Uh, Dina perhaps enjoying the exposure and the height above the bottom of the river a little less than I am as I bounce up and down in my seat uh, enthusiastically. The geology through here is stunning. I mean that that mountain there, the, 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 that, that those sawtooth layers of sawtooth rock. Um, I, I just yeah. It's difficult. It's right, you run out of superlatives. This is an absolutely staggeringly beautiful bit of railway. The engineering is spectacular, but the views... You, you, the thing is, the engineering is spectacular, but it's also unobtrusive, because the, the, the terrain is so enormous that it's very difficult to 
to feel like you're dominating the landscape. You're very much a you're very much a uh, a, a bit part in in some rather impressive terrain. There's the road down below us, the M2, I believe, uh, not a motorway. Uh, <laughs> uh, weaving along behind us as the Moracha uh, heads down towards um, towards the sea, uh, towards. Uh, Kind of meeting with uh, another uh, water body, a uh, water course that will become relevant momentarily. Yeah, there we go. So again, you can see that the, the, the river weaves, the gorge weaves back and forth quite, quite dramatically. Um, oh, and there's my camera focusing on drips again. And you get, and, and the railway is hugging its best to the uh, contours without, without you know, the, the fact that there are lots of little ravines that it has to cut, cut corners with, with, with bridges. So this is, you know, this is where the bridge count really climbs upwards. Um, there's a bit more of a view as we're losing, we're kind of obvi very obviously losing altitude at this point. So, firstly, the train, you feel the train going downhill uh, because it's going downhill at, at very, very steeply at this point. But also, you could you could just see the proximity to the plains. Uh, you know, Podgorica sits on the plains, a kind of very flat terrain, um, and you, you can sort of see it approaching. Really, uh, as I say, tunnel after tunnel after tunnel. It's just tunnel bridge, tunnel bridge, tunnel bridge. It, it's, yeah, a lot of engineering. You could see, and also the foliage has changed. You can see the, 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 the we're now seeing more of these lower, sort of scrubbier trees, um, less less consistent sort of forest cover. You know, for, you know greenery. It's, it's more broken. Um, as as, as and partly as the geology has changed as well. We're, we're, the geology is quite different now to what we were to where we were earlier. So where you had you know dolomites, schists, uh, and, and kind of older formations, so some sort of igneous uh, formations of of limestone. You now have these younger formations. So it, uh, Jurassic and, and indeed I think what we're looking at now is Cretaceous which is being beautifully illuminated by this um, this sun that's decided to appear popping out the clouds the clouds have we've left the clouds behind uh, left the rain behind and the sun is illuminating giving us these wonderful views uh, we're going to briefly pause though a quick content warning uh, because we're going to have to talk about some uh, or one particular rail crash at Biocha, um which is which is where we are now in our rail odyssey yes back in back in 2006 uh Fairly soon after Serbia and Montenegro had gone their separate ways, you know, following the the the, the Yugoslav civil war, uh, the, you know, the the breakup of, uh, of the Yugoslavia, the the last, uh, you know, peacefully the last um, split was between what is now Montenegro and Serbia, and so fairly recently you had the creation of a new uh, railway authority. Um, the railways were not were maintained. They'd you know put what little cash they had got. Uh, for rail funding had gone into just basically getting the line reopened again following the damage caused by, by NATO and others. So with this backdrop of this context, uh, not the train we're on now, but uh, a train travelling on the line at a very similar time at four o'clock, uh, just after four o'clock, uh, a local train, it was a, um, a Class 412, which is the uh, kind of, the, you, I think we possibly went past a few. There, there are six of them running. They're these, these kind of electric multiple units, these four-car electric multiple units. They look pretty um, rough and tough. They were, I think I think the sets that had been procured for um, what was Titograd now, uh, Podgorica, uh, were procured in 1985. So they're fairly recent. They're built by Russian railways, or built by, rather built by the, um, uh, what is it, RVR, uh, in uh, based actually uh, Latvian but but Soviet uh, and, and, and so it was, it was kind of pre fall the Iron Curtain so Soviet built trains bought by Yugoslavia uh, run now uh, you know these the six trains that were run um, by the, the new Montenegrin railways one of these had a brake failure coming down the hill it had a brake failure um, and it's sort of yeah it's kind of, the train was carrying about about three hundred people. Um, and it derailed, kind of with this drop, as you'll as you'll see, as I show you when I, when we resume our journey, you can see the, the, the distance down about a hundred meter drop down into the into the ravine, um, and as a result of this brake failure, going you know too fast around the curve, and the the consequences were pretty horrific. You know there were um, forty five people, at least forty five people killed, um, one hundred eighty four injured. So, you know. Uh, you know, over well over two hundred people's lives, you know, completely, you know, uh, and, and livelihoods and families uh, affected by this uh, horrific crash. As I say, it was a it was a local service, so these are all generally all local people. Um, a lot of the casualties were were 
where children returning from a skiing holiday and other people returning from skiing. So pretty horrific stuff. What happened? You know, what, what, what happened here? Why, why did this happen? Um, the immediate response from the Montenegrin um, government was that it was a it was a failure of the braking system, and the the, the driver Slobodan Drobniak was questioned uh, pretty rapidly, and and the various accusations started being thrown around. The Montenegro Railways executive said human error was the reason for the disaster, blaming the driver. As as you can imagine, there's lots of confusion, lots of accusations being thrown around, lots of very upset families, of course, rightly. It became a real test of. You know, beyond the tragedy of the rail accident itself and the exposure of the the, the the broad structural safety failings of the way that the railway was operate, being operated, it was a real test of, of statehood for Montenegro. And Montenegro failed, really. It was a real mess. The families didn't, didn't really see any justice. There were no prosecutions at a high level in the railway. Um, and there was, you know, only a few days after the accident, there was another near accident occurred. Um, and, you know, the, another train arrive with a crack wheel on the locomotive and a potential for another incident to, to occur. And, and there was kind of continued continued outrage. And, and, and this this kind of just basically, the, politically, they just let it peter out. All the while with the families not seeing justice and, and, and safety not necessarily rapidly improving. So yeah, there was, that's possibly why I was walking up and down the train at the end of the last episode looking for where the brakes were. Um, I think things are a lot better now, but certainly back in 2006 and, and probably for a good five or six or seven Maybe even ten years after that, you know, the, the railways were not in a particularly good good way. And uh, and indeed, as we resume our journey, uh, looking across the hills and down to the valley floor, there's there's quite a distance between where we are and and the and the river below there. Um, you know, there's a substantial elevation difference. The, the track bed has just widened because we're reaching what looks like passive provision for a longer passing loop, actually, or maybe just some slightly improved S and C. But there, there we are, some fairly new track materials, or at least certainly refreshed ballast there. Uh, more later on the the upgrades to the line. Uh, but before we talk about the upgrades to the line, we, we need to think uh, about the, the 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 way in which the line was built and the structures on the line. You know, the civil engineering that went into actually creating this line in the first place. As we as we draw ourselves to a halt, past a nice little latticed OLE mast. Um, indeed, drawing ourselves to a pause. Let's talk about the construction of the line. <laughs> Let's talk about the construction of the Belgrade Bar Railway. Over a period of, of nearly 20 years, you know, 18 years from 1958 to 1976, nearly 500 kilometres of new railway was constructed. It's pretty spectacular. It was built in stages. Um, in, in some cases, you know, uh, up, up in Belgrade, it was kind of connecting into the existing uh, standard gauge railway. And in, in down in Montenegro, uh, in, in Bar, uh, so yeah, up in Belgrade, uh, down in Bar, uh, in Montenegro, it was kind of, in some cases, replacing or, or paralleling former uh, former sections of, of narrow gauge railway, 760 mil um, Austro-Hungarian gauge uh, railway. And to be honest, that was the same in, in places like Užice as well, where there was some existing uh, rail infrastructure already in place. The first stage was um, uh, in 1958, was from uh, connecting up from uh, Resniki up to Vreotsi, uh, where there's uh, a load of uh, lignite mines. Uh, we, we passed them earlier, if you remember. Uh, an episode back. Um, so, yes, yeah, so uh, that was 1958. 1959, the section including the massive uh, tunnel uh, down down uh, through through to Sutomore. Enormous tunnel um, there. Uh, 1959 up to, up, to, uh, up to Podgorica, so up to the capital of what is now Montenegro. The next section of railway was from, it was back in Serbia again, and it was from Vriotsa to Valjevo. So that was built in 1968, so quite a lot later, a decade after the, the, the construction had, had the, sort of the first opening, um, we saw this uh, the, the section between, uh, between uh, Vriotsa and Valjevo opening, followed by another incredibly difficult section of railway to construct down to Užica, so Valjevo to Užica, which was opened in 1972. The last section over the top of the hill as it were, um, going over the top from from Užica to Podgorica, um, over the border, uh, was opened in 1976. So this 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 the 500km of railway built in stages, um, uh, kind of the first stage opening in 1958 and the final stage opening in 1976. And indeed, on the 20th of May 1976, uh, here you can see too much fanfare. There's Tito in the blue train. Uh, and see the railway being opened here with the with those those wonderful um, Kraus Maffei uh, diesel trains uh, at the head, which is strange. Given I mean, it's because it, these trains train needed to go anywhere in Serbia. It wasn't just the electrified bit, but of course, this whole railway was electrified. It was an entirely electrified railway. There's some very smart 
Um, Yugoslav Railway staff there looking quite pleased with themselves. One with the walkie-talkie as well. Very, very snazzy. Um, everyone's very happy with themselves. Marvellous. Uh, because it was brilliant. And there was much fanfare uh, for the opening of this railway. You know, I'll, I'll show you in the next uh, section, um, uh, the next part of this, uh, the, my little cutaways from the journey, um, a fantastic and gorgeous postcard that was released on the day of its, um, of the day of its opening. Just fantastic. A you know, fantastic bit of railway. When it opened, in fact, it was only seven hours from Belgrade down to Bar, giving an average speed of about 42 miles an hour, which you might think is, is a bit slow. But actually, 42 miles an hour for an incredibly mountain, you know, multiple sections of mountain that I have to pass through, 42 miles an hour is pretty damn good. Uh, Sadly, uh, nowadays, with everything somewhat um, fragmented, it takes, well, it took us 30, in, in the end, spoiler alert, it took 13 hours to get from end to end um, when, when I did the journey in 2021. So, um, yeah, quite 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 almost a doubling in the journey time which gives an average to be about 23 miles an hour this is rubbish the plan is that this is getting improved more on that later let's look at the profile because from from that plan view it just squiggles through white it's hard to tell exactly what it's covering but if you look down at the, the kind of the left hand side at belgrade belgrad um you can see that the railway just climbs and climbs it spends whole its whole time climbing um until we reach the peak under the dinaridi mountains um uh, and, and kind of Collishin, which is the, the, the peak, uh, if you like, the, the town at the, the railway station, almost at the summit of the whole railway. But it, that's not that, it still passes through several ranges. So there's, 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 there's the hills of Shumadia and lots of tunnels there. And you can see where the tunnels are, because this is a line I made in Google Earth. You can see all the spikes, which is where the railway passes through um, uh, with a mountain above it. You can see there are several sections with sub substantial mountains. So you've got the Shumadia, the hills of Shumadia, uh, Drenovatki Kik, uh, the mountain there, kind of south of Pozhega, um, is, uh, with another uh, big tunnel. And then Zlatibor, uh, between Užice and Priboy, uh, another massive kind of series of big tunnels there. Um, uh, and then the border between uh, Serbia and uh, Tunagora, uh, Montenegro there, uh, with lots of tunnels before you arrive at Bielo Polje. Um, and then you climb up the hill to Kolishin tunnels galore as you uh, go over the top of the Dinaridi and then down an extremely steep gradient, by the way. The line average is about a 1 in 40 all the way down to uh, Podgorica and, and in fact beyond, you know, to the to the plains towards Bar. You know, incredibly steep gradient for a, for a mainland railway for a very long period of time. Incidentally, uh, at the point at which you're watching this, uh, we are currently here um, at this point on the line. Anyway, you, you, looking along here, you can see that there's a lot of civil engineering required to get to get from, from one end of this railway to the other. Um, you'd be I'm surprised to know that there are a lot of bridges and tunnels. So it's a 486 kilometer railway, standard gauge, majority single track. There's quite a few big passing loops. And there's a few yards. Um, it's all electrified, 25 kV overhead. Um, it has, so of that 486 kilometers, 114 and a half kilometers are about nearly a quarter of the route are in tunnels. So 254 tunnels, so a quarter of the route in tunnels. So Zeno, which is the tunnel uh, right at the Adriatic coast, in fact, um, just as you, as you kind of go through the mountains to get to the coast, uh, is 6.2 kilometers long. It's, a, it's the longest tunnel. It, it's, it's kind of tied with, a, with, with one of the other tunnels on the route that's also pretty much exactly the same length. So 254 tunnels, 435 underbridges as well. Um, which is, you know, 14 and a half kilometers of the route, 3% of the route. So, don't, you know, it's a substantial number of bridges. The highest bridge, Malarieka, is, um, it was for, for a long time, you know, from 76 to 2001, the, the highest royal bridge in the world. And China's nabbed that now. Um, it's a pretty impressive stuff. Still the highest railway bridge in Europe. The railway is split kind of 311 kilometers worth of it are in Serbia. 166 kilometers in, in Montenegro and nine kilometers are in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So kind of an international railway, this one, um, passing through those three countries, but it's, it's just, yeah, the, 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 this is a spectacular bit of railway. It really is absolutely incredible. And on the subject of, um, spectacular bits of railway, we are, we were, uh, last time we checked in, uh, South of Colchin, we are now, um, just reaching a, a bit of an S, a bit of a kink in the in the alignment because we're going from one river catchment uh, briefly onto another. Basically, we're going from the the catchment of the uh, of the Morica River onto the catchment of the Malarieka, the small, the little river. Uh, you can see we're kind of fairly, we're pretty much halfway down the hill at this point. Why is this a particularly significant? Well, apart from the obvious uh, horizontal alignment, well, you might have been hinted by the fact the horizontal alignment had that kink that we're approaching some. Uh, capital B, capital G, big geography. And let's resume our journey. Um, uh, here, uh, I think there's a halt. I don't know whether we, we, we may have passed already or soon to pass. Uh, Bratunajici uh, halt. 
um, uh, kind of sat above, and uh, we're not that far above the Maracha River now. We, we have dropped a bit of height, but not quite enough height that we can continue along this river. As you can see, there's still a bit of vertical uh, difference, elevation difference between the riverbed or, or the, the, the valley floor and where we're at in the railway, which means we're going to continue to have to contour. Um, and contouring means, in some situations, uh, going the wrong way for a bit, which is exactly what we're about to do geographically. So here, um, you can see there's a nice view of the valley floor and some rocks in the way. And in fact, I'm just going to indulge us with a an uncut bit of the just uh, stone cutting uh, popping out. Just to give you a feel for the railway now. Just a, a section of uncut footage as we whiz round and we're starting to... Uh, there's some nice bits of, of broken brush forest here. You can see this low-level brush kind of... Uh, coverage. It's starting to look very Mediterranean, in fact, is, is how I would describe what, what, what the terrain looks like now. We're going round a corner. Um, we're going round a giant U-shape. The hill is coming up around us because that's why we're disappearing into a tunnel. A brief section of tunnel for us to just... For, well, for me at the time when I was contemplating, I was, I was getting increasingly giddy from excitement because I knew what was coming. Um, in fact, you can hear my voice narrowing away about something else in the background, waffling away, because we are... Uh, of course, um, spinning around to go the wrong way up the valley to go over the top of Malarieca. Going over the top of Malarieca when you're still quite high up, uh, the advantage of going round the corner and, and over Malarieca, Malarieca is that it's um, quite a narrow gorge, which means it's reasonable to cover. You can see the railway over there, by the way. You can see those arches of, the, of that railway bridge on the valley, because we are, that's the railway, quite a lot downhill. So there's some there's some coverage to, to so some elevation to cover, and uh, also you can see the construction of a of the um, the A1 highway, which is now open. By the way, this is two years ago. They're still finishing it. It's now open. Um, hence the sinister music from 1812, as we see highway in our in our view. Uh, you'll be glad to know I, I'm starting. I, I rediscover editing again now. So uh, yeah, indeed, there, there, there's the highway. Uh, Massive bit of modern civil engineering. Sadly, uh, railways generally un underloved, underdeveloped in the Balkans, as I've talked about lots. Uh, highways seem to get lots of cash. Uh, it's me wibbling the camera around dramatically. The, the railway's over there. You can see that that little bridge. You can see um, various parts. It's still a, a long way lower than, than we are. And yet, all of a sudden, uh, we're about to disappear into a tunnel. And then, fairly unceremoniously, suddenly we pop out of another tunnel. There we go. Uh, some an access road. And then, all of a sudden, we're on a bridge. And I'm like, oh, oh. Bloody hell, we're, we're on the flipping bridge. As, as me looking down, looking out, no idea where you can see the, the fact that the, the railway just pops in now, uh, there, there. But look down because we are 200 meters above the riverbed. 200 meters, highest, uh, the highest bridge, the highest uh, railway bridge in, in Europe. Uh, in the world for a long time. Um, uh, it's now been nabbed, I think uh, China has, has, has nabbed that record. Um, spectacular bridge, but you can't really get a feel for the, how impressive it is, other than, uh, okay, a brief view backwards at the height of the piers, but we're gonna disappear into a tunnel. Then you can see the scale of it uh, for a second or two, because I think I filmed like 12 little snippets of it. But I don't know if I get the, what, the, the there, you can see the narrow the ravine underneath. Just absolutely incredible bit of engineering. What a bridge. Whoa. Mark, I hope you enjoy it. There it is. Brief seconds, brief glimpses. And then pretty much it's out of view because it's the last snapshot here, I think, before you lose sight of it because you're kind of in and out of tunnels on the way on the way down the hill while the track tries to maintain reasonable geometry coming coming downwards there. Okay, the last last little snapshot there disappearing off. And now we're back kind of in this very Mediterranean, as I said earlier, very Mediterranean looking uh, terrain compared to previously. We're kind of approaching the Adriatic, or still quite a way away from the Adriatic at this point, but the, kind of we're, we're on the Adriatic side of the mountains coming down the hill. Um, we have now dropped an enormous amount of uh, distance, uh, uh, kind of vertical elevation. Um, uh, and uh, in doing so, made it a little easier for the engineers to actually get us down to the sea. So in a way, that S-bend won us some uh, dropping of elevation as well. It gave a little bit of extra horizontal. Um, oh, I'm chatting again, and I believe there's a passing loop too. There it is. Um, it's rather stunning. Oh, I tell you what I can see in the distance, though. Yes, uh, you can just see with my annoyingly badly focusing camera, um, their autofocus is a right pain. Uh, in the distance is an enormous viaduct for the A1 motorway there. Uh, I was talking about the investment in, in engineering going on. You know, Malarieca Bridge is spectacular. It's certainly higher than that bridge over there, but as we pause and look upon it, 
they can see the scale. Uh, this is going to recur in thing. I think another episode in the future when I talk about. Oh, hello, Dina. Uh, Dina also enjoying the uh, the view somewhat. Uh, yes, hello, my dear companion for this this journey. Ah, oh, we're on the move again. Uh, yeah, you get a better view of that bridge. Yeah, there's going to be a future rail network episode where I talk about what an ideal rail network for the Balkans might look like, um, and also uh, probably talk about some of the geopolitics going on here. Geo, the operative word. Yes, that's an enormous highways bridge, uh, and you do think, well, surely an alternative. You know, of upgrading this line, or at least, you know, there are better alternatives, surely. But we have very obviously dropped down in height. We're now, uh, oh, there's lots, also lots of very cheerful kids in the, in the train with us. Yeah, we very much dropped down in height. Um, this is actually, I believe, we're kind of coming around uh, the bottom of um, of uh, Biocha, where the, the derailment occurred that we were talking about earlier. So uh, here is... Uh, I mean, a tunnel. <laughs> the the views. I, I mean, once again, the views are, are really stunning. This 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 low sun started giving us these incredible warm shots. It, it felt like arriving at the seaside. It was really very very beautiful. Um, we were we were kind of uh, feeling giddy. We were already by this point, by the way, quite a lot later than we were supposed to be. Um, we'd lost quite a bit of time. I think we'd stood for quite a long time at the top. Uh, I think we stood for like half an hour stationary at the top of the hill. Um, yeah, you know, better there than, uh, you know, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was slightly unnerving being sat at the top with the the train having creaked to a halt. We were like, hmm. uh, this train needs to work as we go down the hill. But anyway, uh, no, here's here, here are some increasingly uh, Mediterranean-looking views in terms of the architecture as well. <laughs> it's just this really kind of radically different-looking... Uh, there's that ruddy bridge in the background as well, the enormous motorway. Just, yeah, the, 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 look at this. This is spectacular and very different. Very, very different to what we've been looking at before. Um, oh, anyway, I cannot recommend enough that you do this line. Have I, have I said that yet? You should, all of you should get on this ruddy train and enjoy it. Um, fantastic way to get from Belgrade down to the sea, or vice versa, as we'll talk about um, in a bit, where we talk about what the point of this railway is. Um, that's going to happen very shortly. In the meantime, though, we need to enjoy some more river views, because this railway, kind of, we resume our um, our companionship with the Moracha River shortly, and which means that, uh, okay, this is just trees. That's, that's nice. Um, it's, yeah, there we go. There's the river coming coming back into meters in the distance, you can see. Um, that that highway bridge is still there, pretty dominating the landscape. I mean, you know, it's not a bad bit of civil engineering, it's just a shame that it's a highway. Um, there's the river, and suddenly the river starts taking the, uh, the road, also being quite spectacular there in the, in the kind of the top of the shot. Uh, the river starts looking pretty delicious as we get close to it. It's a really nice looking, uh, kind of uh, greeny blue, uh, very, very pleasant. Uh, pleasant enough for a dip, I would say. Uh, I'll, I don't look at the pollution. Actually, this is probably a significantly less polluted river than any UK river at this point. Um, topical. Um, yeah, and th you can see some rather fetching limestone strat, like lo lovely kind of layered limestone. It's all chunks and chunks of sedimentary everywhere around here. Um, uh, we are, but you'll notice something, which is we are basically at river level. We are down with the water, you know, we're just above this glorious looking ravine with the river running through it. It's absolutely gorgeous. In fact, absolutely gorgeous. This, this is the Moracha. It runs down through um, it kind of this, this just scoops up lots of rivers on its way down. It scooped up the Malarieca. It scoops up the, 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 the Zeta River. Uh, and anyway, we see some nice, nice little bridge there. Um, uh, and things are getting more urban, as you'll notice as well. Uh, the, the hill, the, the horizon is lower. <laughs> things are flatter. Uh, see more scattered houses around all over the place. In fact, I think I've run this video long because we're reaching the point at which the, that big highway, the A1, this is the end of it. Uh, we're about to run underneath the big junction that connects it up to um, the old road, the old M2 again. Uh, this is where it connects up. There's the tolls, there's a nice horn. Um, and we're going to whiz underneath this uh, this big old concrete highway. Would have been nice if they'd done this with the railway, alas. There's some rebar sticking out of it. Anyway, we are in the urban sprawl very much of Podgorica, uh, what used to be called Titograd, along with a load of other places. Užica used to be uh, Tito Užica, um, as it was before. Uh, we went through Užica in the well, both ep kind of episode one and episode two of this little mini series. Anyway, I digress. Here we are. This is Podgorica it's looking very, um, very pleasant. The capital of Montenegro, uh, with the sun setting beyond, uh, and this sort of scattered housing all over the place. Podgorica is chaos from an urban planning perspective. <laughs> We're, uh, we're just coming into Podgorica now, and um, then we go through the suburbs. And 
I think it gets a bit flatter and straighter, but as you've seen, it's uh, pretty wiggly at this point. Uh, spectacular. We're also pretty late, I think. Not Dina thinks. Uh, we're like probably an hour late, but we'll see. Maybe we make up that time. I think, I don't know. Not an hour. It's like, it's like eight. It's like half half seven now, or like quarter past seven. And we're supposed to arrive at eight. We're supposed to arrive at eight. We'll see. Anyway, I've got it. Oh, my hopeless optimism. Uh, we were already very late by that point. Um, yeah, here we are, arriving in Podgorica station, uh, the big station. There's not much railway, really, in um, uh, in Montenegro. There's there's uh, a small branch line that goes down to the Albanian border through Tuzi, and then there's a, a fairly substantial railway that goes up uh, through, um, uh, kind of, uh, up to a, to a place called Nikšić. Um, uh, and, and it's kind of that's a most industrial. I think it's used by commuters as well. There's some 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 train survey. Anyway, there we are. Stopped. Podgorica. Um, there's a fair few people getting off. It's quite, quite popular. Oh, there's it's, uh, there's what looks like a that's the headquarters of the railway, I suppose. But it, it looked like a oh, but it looked like a, a an air, air traffic control thing. Uh, this is me wondering what that ding was, and then realizing it's the. Um, it's possibly the train driver, but certainly one of the train staff just walking up the, the train, whacking the wheels to check they sound nice to, so they haven't broken. Um, to, to, I've, 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 alternative means of inspection are available uh, and recommended. Yeah, we're in Podgorica and uh, yeah, just the, uh, just the guard going and bashing all the wheels of the train with a hammer. Make sure they sound nice so they haven't broken. Makes sense. Well, that was loud. Anyway, where, where are we at? So we were. Um, up uh, <laughs> the other side of Malarieka uh, Bridge. Uh, now we are in Podgorica. There we are, capital of Montenegro, as I said a minute ago. Uh, and as you see, not quite on the flat Adriatic Plain, but nearly down at sea level. We're, we're not quite there. It's slightly elevated. It's up on a bit of a plateau, but uh, nearly at the bottom of the hill. Ah, anyway, we've set off. In fact, in the background, you can see one of those uh, EMUs I was talking about that was involved in the Biotti derailment. Uh, looking a little bit uh, tagged uh, but yeah we're off uh, making our way out of Podgorica station you can see me filming uh, and Dina just tolerating my constant shenanigans oh look it's a steam train in fact I think that might be a narrow gauge train referencing the old narrow gauge railways the old 760 mil railways that were ev like quite wide widespread across um, uh, Yugoslavia as we talked about last episode uh, there are a lot of knackered locomotives uh, and some uh, there's, there's a what we're about to see is more of these EMUs. Uh, I mean, they're all right. They're, they're perfectly robust. I've travelled in them in Belgrade. They're perfectly, perfectly reasonable EMUs. Uh, there's one in the background that has apparently melted, and uh, there's a train shed where hopefully some new ones might appear in the future. There's just lots of knackered locomotives, and there's another knackered EMU. I don't know if those are the Biocha ones. I really hope not. I hope those would be scrapped anyway. Um, there's a lot of railway space here. There's a lot of space for a better railway to be built, frankly. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, we're, as you can see, quite nicely from our acceleration there, we picked up a good pace quite quickly. It's a decent electric locomotive up front. Uh, there was a buffer stop. Uh, put that in your copybook. Uh, that, I think, is the branch line going off to the Albanian uh, border, in fact, that we just saw. Just this single uh, single track line. Uh, talking of railway infrastructure, I think it's high time now to round out our little cutaways. The last cutaway is going to be talking about what on earth are these tracks used for and potentially what could they be used for in the future. But why is the railway here in contemporary terms? Uh, so that's that's what we're going to talk about as the tracks whiz past. <laughs> So in our various cutaways, we've already talked about uh, the history of the of, of Socialist Yugoslavia, uh, which is kind of the context for which this railway was was created. Uh, we've talked about the construction of the line, you know, uh, the, the the process by which it was created, you know, the stages that it was built in, um, and we've uh, there's, there's some, look at these gorgeous postcards. My goodness, they are absolutely delicious. They're so lovely. Um, well, there are not enough postcards made for railway openings. Anyway, you can see indeed from the from the um, address side of the postcard. I don't know where you write your message on this, by the way. Anyway, I, I don't care because it's gorgeous. As you can see from the the map on the on the kind of the address side of the uh, the postcard, um, this I mean fundamentally this was a, a this was a railway built to connect Belgrade to the Adriatic coast and a harbour, a port on the sea. That's the fundamental reason for this railway's existence. Um, 
but will you know is that still how it's used today uh well uh, yes uh, critically indeed it's it's still the main route a huge amount of uh, of goods are transported uh, along it indeed there are you know i think from montenegro 60 percent of the of, of the country's freight traffic actually comes by rail so let alone going up into serbia from montenegro it's a huge amount of of, of goods are transported uh via rail um, from the sea, from uh, from the harbour at Bar. Following you know, a few decades of neglect, uh, there is investment coming in. You know, so Serbia has been investing, well, has been provided cash to invest, uh, some of it Russian, and that will probably be drying up if it hasn't already. Um, cash to invest in its own railways. And it's they're, they're saying they're going to spend 14 billion uh, euros on infrastructure. Uh, that was This is three or four years ago. Uh, only Sadly, only three and a half billion of that is uh, on railways. Um, and the good chunk of that, uh, okay, a lot of it's gone on the Belgrade-Budapest upgrades uh, up to Subotica, the border, um, where there's an, basically a new kind of medium speed line being built. You can look on Google Earth and see the trace of it. Um, a few sat, old, lovely old stations abandoned, sadly, but, uh, but a pretty good bit of railway just being built. But others, uh, other parts of that cash has been spent on Belgrade Bar, uh, or certainly Belgrade down to the down to the Serbian border, and uh, lots of this is so. Some of it's uh, from the national budget, you know, sixty million ish, and two hundred million from uh, is a Russian loan supported by Russian railways. Um, that was that was signed off in October nineteen. How that stands now, I don't know, but I think a lot of the money has been spent. Um, that was all on Belgrade Bar. And really, it's kind of covering signalling for the most part. So it's really bringing the railway back to this level of operation, but perhaps with a bit more hands-off uh, than it was operated in the immediate after, you know, its immediate opening in the mid-70s. So lots of investment coming in from Serbia or uh, kind of for the Serbian section of the line. Um, but this is true, you know, and I, I picked up these uh, Deutsche Bahn little news articles as well as the other news articles that you can sort of see there. I'll just pop these up because uh, Deutsche Bahn are kind of acting as the uh essentially the kind of this is partly to say we should network rail should be doing much more of this because we are actually quite good the network rail is actually quite a good organization at doing these sorts of projects deutsche Bahn absolutely cornered the has cornered the market in europe in any case probably because they're further ahead with signaling technology and, and other things so they can sort of step in and and uh and and you know uh dominate rather the european market so that you know deutsche Bahn here working on some of the kind of the broad Serbian rail projects, the pan-European transport corridors, and uh, you know they, they they understand the other projects going on around, so they can tie into those. They're, they're usefully placed in the market. Anyway, Deutsche Bahn acting as the consultants uh, on this, so they're kind of managing the the engineering of the consultancy side of things, so acting as the, the kind of the design leads and probably facilitating through subcontractors, but also you know they're they're managing those those um, uh, kind of as as part of a joint venture, in fact, for some of the work going on. Um, Again, this is the this is for the the northern end. This is Belgrade up to the the uh, the Hungarian border. But likewise, they are spending that money down towards the the Montenegrin border on on Belgrade Bar Railway. And um, uh, here's a an extract from the European Bank pointing out that a sizable amount of money has been spent on you know upwards of a billion quid spent on 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 rail um, through the the uh, the European Bank for reconstruction development um, on on rail. Uh, throughout the Western Balkans, so that covers quite a wide region, of course. But uh, within that is, uh, is 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 various tens of millions being spent in Montenegro. So it's not just Serbia; Montenegro also spending cash. Um, and the suggestion since two thousand and six is a significant date, as you know from what we talked about earlier in the episode. Um, around seven hundred million has been invested in Montenegro um, across. Uh, across the board, not just in rail. That's a, that's a huge amount of money that's been spent across all sorts of things. But the point is that there's upgrades to um, yeah, upgrades to various bits of railway, but particularly the 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 connection to Bar up to Podgorica and then from Podgorica up to up to Bielopolia and the, the the Serbian border. So money is being spent. As I say, um, it's it's not as much as there should be. It's not making huge, great strides in reducing journey times or increasing capacity, but it's making great leaps in terms of you know signalling and, and and the operational side of the railway. Uh, this last little um this little little uh, page here is uh, basically kind of 
uh, going through some of those some of the details about what uh, what's being spent you know the amount of eu support being spent so you know again it's tens of millions some of it for structural works you know upgrading hundreds in fact we saw last episode we saw one of those yellow signs saying look this is a civil engineering project being funded by people uh strengthening tunnels because you know there's a lot of bridges and tunnels as we talked about this episode they need refurbishment uh, enhancement in some cases replacement um, some of them needed replacing from being blown up. Um, anyway, so that's all the upgrade work that's happening. But what of the uh, the railway today? What of the railway today? What does it do? What is it? What is it for? How does it fit into the wider Balkan network? For that, we need to jump to Open Railway Map. Uh, let, let's, let's look at, at us. Uh, well, not actually all of us, but, but, but it's me anyway, over here in uh, in Nata Towers. Uh, and let's just whiz down. I was, I was. A few of you might have caught my thread and future rail Nata talking about the need for a, a um, Adriatic to Ionic uh, uh, coastal railway. Well, for the future. But for now, let us talk about. You can see various railways here, you know, that were, that were built, and we went through in the the history of uh, Socialist Yugoslavia and its railways, and various coastal railways. Again, all connecting up to ports. You know, ports at Zadar, um, particularly ports at Split as well. Um, Bosnia had its connection uh, ish, except that it goes down to the point in Plotja. Um, Dubrovnik, you can see here. These are the old narrow railways that are, that are shown in in, in grey here, um, and Bar. Here we go down to Bar. In fact, again, you can see the you can see the the alternative to a gigantic uh, uh, tunnel uh, tunnel under Sozino, which is the longest on the line, isn't it? Uh, or, or or near to it um, is the is the former narrow gauge railway that weaved along uh, up and down a little slower. In any case, we're 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 making our way down from from Podgorica uh, up here. Let's zoom out and have a little think. Oh, there's the border with Albania. So that's the branch line. There's the other line that whizzes up to um, to Nikšić up there. Let's talk about what this railway does. So it is all about transporting uh, from the port down here in Bar, which has, if we zoom in, you can see it's a pretty major port. Uh, there are Deep Harbour, big big port, big harbour, uh, which I think I capture a little bit in film later, uh, connecting up to Belgrade. Uh, through here, through here, through here. Actually, it also connects across into the into the kind of the broader uh, Balkan network, uh, you know, Tratrak and, and, and down into other places towards Greece. But Belgrade is where it comes up to. Um, within Belgrade, you have, you see all the old uh, tram lines there. Uh, within Belgrade, there are a, a few major, uh, I mean, firstly, there's the, you're connecting up to the Danube. So at the Danube, there are various bits of, of, um, of old rail infrastructure. Now, can, now disconnected, though, interestingly enough. This used to connect across it's all been dug up. So these this harbour, uh, I don't know what their plans are for it, but it is now no longer rail connected. Uh, the majority of their um, railway connections are now. See, they've interestingly they seem to be drawing on. Anyway, that's all the old railway. And I, I'm going to get angry about Belgrade railways when I do that. But, but there's um, a major there's, there's a major interchange here, and there are also connections up to other other kind of parts and there's there's this uh the, the lines you know the, the, there's lots of port at Pantravo as well uh but the city itself is a major draw on on, on trade of course and the railways uh, going in all directions is critical so you've got belgrade bar coming up to belgrade connecting up to the railways that go across so for example over to zagreb croatia there's ljubljana uh, trieste and then up from ljubljana into into austria so that's, that's one of the major corridors uh down through in the other direction, though, is from Belgrade down towards, uh, you know, basically to, towards Kosovo, uh, Skopje down there, but also to Greece. So connecting down to, to down, down this way to Greece, uh, to Athens, um, and then over to Turkey. You know, over to the, the railways connecting over to Istanbul. You know, there there is it's, it's, it's a key railway corridor. In fact, you zoom in, you can see the the upgrades that are happening uh, within Turkey on uh, within uh, kind of the european turkey if, if you want to call it that actually there's a better name for this bit of turkey that i can't quite remember um and uh, again major corridor connecting through these are major rail corridors that, that carry a lot of goods um china has a serious interest and in, has been investing a lot of money because it's part of its kind of um belt you know it's 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 basically road and rail connections across the across from china into europe so it has access to its major markets uh, can export goods at pace but you can see the network is a bit of a, it's still a bit of a mess. Um, but you can see that, so this carries, in terms of freight, I mean, passenger services, it has lots of suburban passenger services, but it is carrying, uh, and also the long distance passenger services that, upon which we have all traveled so far. 
but the the lion's share of traffic and tonnage is 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 intermodal goods um so it's it's you know it's all the, it's the boxes being uh, traveling up and down you can see my mouse by the way can you know i'm wiggling around uh, it's the box uh but also there's other heavy goods so there, there's also there's also various sort of um you know it's service quite industrial so there's quite a lot of of of, of there's coal certainly there's coal up this end of the line uh there's actually a lot of lignite that gets transported if we go down here it's you see these these the, this this is just lignite extraction uh to be burned to create electricity in these two power stations uh particularly this one but yeah not 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 the best to be honest the, these are all yeah uh Vriotsi, uh here which is where all the i think we, we went through Vriotsi in episode one and i think i pointed out anyway lots of lignite being burned there's lots of railway around here for burning for collecting up lignite and sending it to get burned uh not the best uh something to think about repurposing uh serbia in any case you can see all the old railways, all these old 760 mil railways weaving around all over the place. Anyway, I digress. This one uh, goes from Visegrad uh, up to uh, uh, the, the where is it? Uh, it goes up, it goes up to the, to to the, the the fancy old. It's not Dervagrad. It's it's anyway. It's uh, go and visit. It's nice. <laughs> It's, it's an old heritage, Narragan heritage railway. Um, it's worth visiting. You can get there from Užica, which is here. Anyway, I digress horribly. There's the bit that goes into Bosnia. That's in Republika Srpska, uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, by the way. Anyway, I digress horribly. Look, that's what the railway is for. It's the key connection from Belgrade to the coast, um, and it merits upgrade. And indeed, the part of the challenge of, 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 of smoothing the alignment is that you steepen the railway. So if you get rid of the kinks, you actually have to steepen the railway. So it's, it's, no, it's no easy engineering challenge to fix or, or, or smooth out a railway engineered in this, in this manner. Um, but they can definitely do some work to increase speeds and track quality, which they have been improving, as you saw, you've seen in the, in the, in the, the look behind you footage um, at the end of each episode, which there is some of this one um, as well. Uh, you can see lots of track upgrades that have been happening. So that there's a lot being spent on that, which which allows them to run higher sustained speeds and, and hopefully bring those journey times for passengers down a bit close to what they were in the 70s. Talking of which, here we are at reasonable speed with a rather glorious sunset happening behind us uh, because it's we're coming to the end of our journey. You can see all these funny little narrow pines. Uh, very, as I say, I've said this several times in this video, haven't I? Very Mediterranean. You can just sense the difference compared to when we're in the mountains and, and up on the sort of Serbian plains and up in, even back in Shumadia. Um, it, 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 it's a spectacular trip, and, and you know, as as we oh, we, we pulled up at a station. There's someone presumably selling honey, and and or uh, it's basically going to be honey. It's always going to be honey. Maybe some jam. Um, classic Balkans fair. Here we are. We were at a stop. Now we're not. We're moving along. I think we're about to go over a little bridge anyway. Um, uh, alongside a road, as we we've actually kind of head towards uh, Sozina Tunnel, the big tunnel that goes under the hill before you reach the coast, the Adriatic coast, and. Um, Yes, this journey. Let's let's be pensive about the journey. It's it's been it was spectacular. We were very late at this point, which is a shame because it meant that it was dark by the time we reached the coast. Uh, we just got embarrassingly overtaken by a small green car. Oh dear. Um, it's a shame because we, yeah, we missed I missed the nice you know filming along the coast. So I'm afraid you're not going to get the beautiful coastline because it was pitch black by the time we got there. Uh, I'm very sorry, but we did get views across the you know this the absolutely stunning uh, Skadarsko lakes. Yeah, they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, and uh, so yeah, we, we enjoyed those views, um, which is interesting. You kind of look across to Albania, which is which is kind of quite interesting. Um, this bit's quite it's quite quite luscious again actually. So from being quite arid, it, as you get kind of reach this part, it all gets quite green. I don't know. I think I presume it's because it's close to, to close to the lake, uh, and so it's this lovely lovely amount of fresh water in the ground, you know, in, in the water table that feeds uh, greenery up through. Anyway, it's lovely. Uh, we are slowly trundling along. Thanks everyone for watching, by the way. Yeah, I, I, I say cheerio later, but yeah, thanks for for watching. What's quite some? It's very slow television. So it's been a delight to have you along for the ride. Uh, it's been nice for me to uh, put these together and relive the journey, uh, a journey that I would love to do again and, and in, fully intend to. Uh, it'd be nice to do it in winter uh, if the train runs reliably. It'd be nice to do it in winter. I'm very upset and angry about some of the changes that have happened up in Belgrade. Uh, the fact that this train doesn't start in the old Austro-Hungarian, you know, Orient Express type station. The fact that it doesn't start down the centre of Belgrade, it's, it's actually, the train starts either in Prokop or possibly some, you know, it, we, we started this in Top Tudor, but I think it's down in Prokop again, which is the main station. Um, uh, horrible, uh, horrible station. I think they've put a roof on it, but it's like an external, it's like an external cladding, not a, a 
so it's not actually making the station nice and grand inside. It's just concrete and oh, it's just horrible. And it's also un completely unconnected from the rest of the city. It's rubbish. Uh, it's, it's, uh, Belgrade, I, I love you. It's my, like, possibly my favourite city in the world, but it's just bad choices made by vacuous and vain politicians. That sounds familiar, Brits? Yeah, it should do. Oh, look, we're pulling up again. Yeah, we're not making tremendously rapid progress at this point, uh, but I believe we're pulling up because uh, a train needs to get past. Um, and indeed... Here we are. Yeah, look, it's a train. And I think this might be the sleeper going the other way. Because, um, yeah, it's quite long, and those are all, like, what, bunks and cushettes and things. So, yeah, I, I, I strongly suspect that we are looking at the sleeper train and indeed intruding on people who are trying to just, you know, brush their teeth and go there. Uh, oh, my autofocus has gone to hell as well, which is nice. Excellent. Marvellous stuff. Anyway, we're, we're whizzing along. Uh, oh, this train has also seen better days. <laughs> It's quite nice seeing other trains on the line. You know, it's 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 a it's a long single track railway for the most part, so it, it can feel quite lonely. It's nice to have another train go past, even down here where it's a bit more urbanised and a bit a bit busier. Uh, as this train, oh, and these are the uh, the the motor rail cars with the, with coach you know with cars on them, in fact. Um, so there we go. Now, passing an old station with a with a proper platform there. The thing is, I think that's probably the freight platform rather than the passenger platform is always low on these. Uh, Old, old station there, isn't it? Grand. What's funny is that, I mean, those are buildings built in the... They're, they're not all built, they're not all really station buildings, they're built in the 70s. Anyway, I digress. Here we are, whizzing along. Once again, we've got these, these absolutely gorgeous views out across the water, uh, towards the mountains, uh, and, and you know, behind those mountains, you've got Budva, uh, Sveti Stefan, you've got Petrovac, Namoru, all these uh, hidden over the other side of those mountains, looking gorgeous. Uh, but this is pretty nice here, actually. In fact, I'd go as far as to say this view is another unique and stunning vista to add to the pretty unending list of absolutely stunning vistas that you can enjoy on the railway. Uh, what a delight, yeah. Um, hopefully I've captured them. I don't know how I've captured them in audio form. Currently you can hear some kids having an absolutely terrific time behind me. But in terms of how I've captured them visually, well, in this case, my camera's squint, so not perfect, but hopefully you're still getting a feel for the delights that await you if you somehow squeeze your way over to Belgrade and book yourself a ticket. Uh, this is not an ad. I'm not being paid by the, uh, given the mean things I've just said about the Belgrade authorities, I'm not, I'm certainly not being paid by the uh, Serbian authorities to, to, to get you to go and travel on this train. I just think you should because it's nice. It's a forgotten corner, well not forgotten, it's an ignored corner of Europe down here um, for, for many of us Brits. Uh, which it never, it wasn't always uh, oh look, it's me sticking my head out the window. Um, yeah, funnily enough, that my last tidbit is that Yugoslavia used to be Britain's most visited uh, destination. A lot of us in Croatia, but also a bit of Montenegro. Um, so, uh, and, and probably a bit of Slovenia as well. And I don't, to the extent to which that's still true, I don't know. But um, go visit, because you can enjoy what is an absolutely stunning bit of railway. Well, it's dark, which means I can't really film anything anymore. Uh, it's dark, so I can't really feel anything anymore, and um, we're nearly, nearly at Sutomore, uh, which is uh, the, la the penultimate stop for bar. Uh, at which point we'll be getting off the train, which would be nice. But uh, it's been spectacular. It's a shame that it's ended in the dark. The train being late means that we've uh, missed some sights. We won't be able to see the Adriatic, which will be out of that window shortly. I don't think it'll work on film, but uh, yeah, so. So that's that really. All that remains while I stand in this little vestibule here. All that remains for me to say is um, is uh, you can uh, listen to this in all on all good podcasting platforms. <laughs> it's very loud. Um, yes, so talking of audio. Uh, all good on uh, podcasting platforms you can listen to this, thanks for listening. I don't know how this well this will work in audio before. Uh, but then I, I literally never do and I always say that. Uh, can support me to do more of this nonsense uh, on, <laughs> on Patreon, patreon.com slash Gareth Dennis, um, and, and also you can go on to the Discord to, to chat about this and whether this is a dreadful idea and what I've done differently and things that you found interesting, uh, Gareth Dennis, in case slash Discord, and then you can jump the pennies on PayPal, paypal.me slash Gareth Dennis. I went very radio detailing, didn't I? Very, very radio too. Um, 
next week, next week, what is happening next week? Future Gareth will tell you what is happening next week because I've no idea, because I don't even know when this is going to go out. Um, so that, that should be interesting. Uh, indeed it shall be pondering Gareth of two years ago. Uh, yes, uh, next week it's going to be uh, a wander around the Wonder Lab of the National Rail Museum. Uh, joined we shall be, uh, depending on how much footage my dear friend Tim uh, pops over to me because he's a very busy man. Um, we'll have Tim Dunn joining us uh, in the past to talk about Wonder Lab, uh, the NRM's new gallery, uh, possibly with a bit of extra afterthought post-text from me given what I've seen in, in on social media uh, around this and how wrong so many people have got it. Um, so uh, tune in for that. That's next week, episode 184. I guess say that should be interesting. We'll never know. Um, and really all that remains for me to say is, uh, is thanks, thanks for watching. I'm going to leave you with some quiet train kind of views out the back of the train as we reach our final destination. Um, but uh, so I'm going to not shout cheerio and then the credits are kind of up come up. I'm going to just gently, gently wave cheerio and, uh, and leave you with that lovely soundtrack. Cheerio. Now, as I hinted, goodness knows how many episodes ago, I think possibly in the last live episode, uh, which, uh, don't worry, live ones are coming in a bit, but I've got quite a few more pre-records because it's, it's, it's pat leave and, and I, I piled up a lot of pre-records just to make sure that I'd had evenings free. Um, to, to win some Steam keys for a, a copy of TS Classic and some fun DLC, uh, there's a competition. Look, it's a real matter competition. It's like, it's like old telly. Uh, what do you need to do to win? To win the Steam key, you must answer this question. How many buffer stops did we see in all three Belgrade Bar episodes? That is, how many buffer stops did we see in all three Belgrade Bar episodes? Uh, there are no terms and conditions. Uh, what sort of bloody show do you think this is? To actually get your answers to me, uh, email them. Uh, I'm going to collect them up via email. So that's railnatter at garethdennis.co.uk. Send your answers to railnatter at garethdennis.co.uk. Call now.